get to before you're like, okay, they have to by law because this man's nearing 500 <laughs> at the middle point of this season. <laughs> what what is what has he been hitting? So he's now. Uh, I'm I'm just looking this up because I, I don't know the number off the top of my head. So Luis Arias is currently hitting. He's actually one for two today. Okay. He is currently hitting 402. <laughs> With a 451 OBP and a 495 slugging percentage, I'm also curious when the last time a guy put up a 400, 400, 400 season was. That's I'm gonna yeah. I'm gonna I'm gonna play index that one after this, but okay. Um, I want to look at his game log just real quick because it seems like over the last like three weeks in particular, he's been just destroying. Like here, let's just do it for over the from since May 16, uh, using Fangraph's special little game logs. Mm-hmm. Since May 16, Luis Arias has hit 434, 476, 539. That's 33 hits in 84 plate appearances. Fun fact, zero home runs. He's a treasure. Protect him it's, at all costs. It's really, you know, I, I think, I, a little bit of a digression. I don't think Arias hits 400 for the full season just because I think it is borderline impossible to hit 400 yeah. over a full season. Like, there's a reason it hasn't been done since 1941, since Ted mm-hmm. Williams, who was arguably the greatest hitter who ever lived. But I do think it's incredibly realistic for Arias to end up somewhere in that 350 to 380 range and basically be the latter day Tony Gwynn in that regard. Hmm. You know, which I, I, I understand too the idea. It's like, oh, that's sacrilege. No one can be Tony Gwynn. Tony Gwynn's skill set is very special, but it's not it, it's not impossible to replicate. Yeah. Tony Gwynn was a guy who was very good at making contact, who never struck out, who put the ball in play constantly because he also didn't draw much in the way of walks, and was just adept at hitting line drives and going the other way. That's Luis Arias. I mean, their skill yeah. sets are pretty comparable. You know, I think the sacrilege would be in saying Luis Arias will be the next Tony Gwynn because no, that requires another like dozen years of doing this. Mm. But I think to say Luis Arias has Tony Gwynn's skill set and can arrive at Tony Gwynn's outcomes, I think that's entirely realistic. I mean, I, I'd i be stunned at this point if Arias ended up hitting below 350 for the season. But I, I do think, I mean, consider that really all you need to get off the 400 path is a not even really a two-week slump, just two weeks of hitting like 300. That's enough to get Arias back down, like almost permanently back down below 400. So regardless, so I, you know, I... For all his heroics, and it's it's going to be interesting to see how that plays out. I still don't think the Marlins are a playoff team unless they add like two more Luises or Reyes to the lineup. Well, there you go, um, John Taylor. And yes. happier news, Ellie De La happier Cruz news. made his debut. Yeah, and he's going to be fun. He's good for baseball. Yo, he and O'Neill Cruz need yes. to team up for some kind of duo act, like some kind of barnstorming duo act during the off season. Mm-hmm. Where they just go around like hitting balls a million miles and like throwing balls like a hundred miles. That would be like it's it's crazy thing O'Neill Cruz who just feels like such a physical like anomaly mm. that the Reds are like okay we have that but somehow like taller. Yes, like it, it, it makes absolutely no sense. What are they putting in the water down in in the Dominican Republic, man? Like those He's guys are six five, right? Let's see. The, yes, six. Five. Ellie Ellie De La Cruz is six foot five, throws a hundred miles an hour, hits a hundred miles an hour. And runs with the same rough sprint speed as Trey Turner. That's that's insane. That is an insane combination of abilities. That makes absolutely no sense. It's it. I think it's kind of equivalent. Do you remember that moment? I, it, I and I'm kind of speaking vaguely here because I'm obviously not a football guy, but it felt like there was a moment in the last ten years in the NFL when the level of physical freaks just started like exponentially increasing. When guys like DK Metcalf or hmm. um. Maybe not Aaron Donald, because Aaron Donald is a, a just a, a thing unto himself. But, like, mm-hmm. you know, those those dudes who could just easily, like, pivot between, like, linebacker and defensive end and just, you yeah. know, can play with one hand on the dirt or... or, or- <laughs>